Okay. All right. We're live. We're live. Hey guys, it's Ashley Gravano with Paradigm Title Group. I'm here today with Francesca Rubucci. Hello. How are you guys today? Um, always takes a bit to, to get some viewers on. Um, we're here today to talk to Francesca about um, what she does uh, front to back. Um, it's been quite some time since I've done a live video, so I thought it would be nice to, to get back into the swing of things. I'm gonna press play on that too. That didn't work. Anyway, so it looks like we've got um, a couple people chiming in. Oh, so, perfect. Hey guys, hey Hello. Gabby, how are you? Um, so I'm gonna really jump right into the to the heart of the meeting today. Um, Francesca and I connected on social media, which is pretty much a topic we're here to talk about. <laughs> That's right. Um, what she does for a living, uh, what her passions are, um, how she can help uh, folks in the real estate industry, um, the entertainment industry, the, the hospitality industry. Um, so we're here today to talk about social media. Right? Perfect. Right. Yes, one of my favorite topics. Hi, my name is Francesca Rigucci. Just to reintroduce myself, I'm the owner of Francesca Rigucci Marketing. And what I do is I help my clients in the real estate and hospitality industry garner relationships on social media. So that's Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram for right now. And I help them really cultivate a brand and a brand promise that's appropriate for them. So what does that mean if you're a realtor, you're talking about lifestyle and achieving your goals of selling a property, growing relationships with clients or partnerships. So I help my clients really achieve their goals on social media while having a nicely curated feed. Nice. So um, Francesca kind of takes charge of the social media, right? So let's talk a little bit about that. I know that um, the agents and loan officers out there, um, you're running, you're running scenarios for your clients. You're going to appointments. Right. Oh, I forgot to to post something on social media today. Um, and we all know if you're out of sight, out of mind these days because Definitely. social media is such a huge part of the the business in general. Um, so you take charge of their social media for them. Do you sit down and kind of map out their vision um, or do you kind of direct them on, all right, this is what I think you should be doing for the type of clientele you're working with? So here's what the process looks like. So when I'm working with a client on their monthly marketing plan, that means I take over their social media accounts. I have the passwords, the usernames in order to do what I need to do, scheduling the post and growing their followership or helping them build relationships through messaging. And what that onboarding process looks like is I have a consultation call with a potential client and we go through a process of really understanding what their goals are. I give them a questionnaire to fill out in order to understand who their target client is, the geographic location, their awards, their accomplishments, all of that business history. So I understand how to best interpret them and represent their credibility online because what I'm doing is helping my clients become more credible in the social right. media yeah. landscape. And literally, hey, Michalina, how are you? Hi. Um, thanks for the for the heads up there. So um, you talked a little bit about um, you know their territory and their area. Um, are you tied into Pennsylvania? Or are you everywhere, anywhere, kind of similar to, to Paradigm? I work with clients on a national basis. So that's anywhere from Los Angeles to New York and the Philadelphia area. Uh, with With marketing, I'm really able to just expand and help people anywhere because it's about me understanding social media and the consumer dynamics, the purchasing power on those platforms, and for me to adopt uh, those clients' core values and what they hold true within their business. That's a good good point there, the <laughs> core values. Um, something we were talking about before we went live was um, your image on social media. Um, the type of image you portray is the type of clientele I think you're going to get. Right. Um, so if you're portraying this high-end luxury image, you're hopefully going to attract um, a high-end luxury client. Um, hey, Jen, we were just talking about you. Jen just joined us. Hello. From, uh, <laughs> Love she's my heels. Yeah, she's my <laughs> clothes, deals, and heels agent up in North Jersey. Oh, perfect. Um, her and I did a video not too long ago, so... Um, <laughs> It's time for us to circle back. But what I was saying was we were talking briefly how um, some people in the real estate profession, um, not to throw it out there, but they post some, some sketchy, probably borderline unprofessional okay. um, photos or comments. Um, what are your thoughts on that? How do you, how do you tell, tell your clients politely, because they're clients still, um, 
how to fix that or uh, curtail some of that behavior? So when I start working with a client, I look at the history of their account and just talk about different ways. So image number one being your clothing. So the clothes you wear is going to match the type of client that you're working for. So if you're a more casual, laid back person, great. If you are someone who wears a suit every single day, that's great. Just always make sure that you know you have a clean, polished look. Your hair is nice. You wear, you know you wear, everything looks clean because people look at that. Whether you're on video photos or in person, because we live in such a visual yeah. world, uh, people are predetermining based off of what they see. And another look is also what the social media looks like. You were talking about, you know, selective videos right. that may be unprofessional. And again, you just have to keep in mind your credibility and reputation because if people are looking at, you know, two title companies or two realtors or mortgage lenders, they're going to select the one that they find more professional right. and is able to get the job done right. without, um, teetering off into doing other things. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I <laughs> so was, just watch what yes, you put out exactly. there. That's the moral. Well, <laughs> there's the, the saying, right, that you dress for the job you want. Right. Um, so, you know, you can see all the funny memes that say, like, I'll wear a Catwoman costume to work because <laughs> I want to be like Catwoman. But, um, and thanks for the compliment on the jacket, Michalina. She was saying she looks the, the leopard today. Oh, I, figured I I'd love it. Bring it out a bit. <laughs> um, but, you know, I see that Vinny just joined. He's a, a lender in the North Jersey area. Um, who has the prettiest feet out of the two of you? That we're gonna feet? skip that question. <laughs> um, okay. We're gonna pass on that one. But anyway, so okay. um, just to get back on track from that question, um, how much time do you think um, an agent, or let's say maybe not time, but how many times do you think it's appropriate for you to post as you're managing their page? Um, should they do? Should you be doing once a day, three times a day, or is there really just not a, a sweet spot number? Average Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn twice a day. Okay, good. Absolute maximum three times a day. Absolutely no more than three times a day just because of the algorithm, and that's basically the mathematical equation of social media. Um, and on Twitter, I recommend three to five times a day because Twitter is a quicker moving platform. I don't tweet. That's one thing I haven't really gotten into. Twitter is like a place that you have to spend a lot of time yeah, on. Great. So whenever I'm talking to a client, I always ask what's their priority because I want to make sure that both of our like, pri priorities are aligned. And Twitter is always the last set of conversation. But Twitter is the place where you need to engage the most because okay. of that conversation element. Yeah. Like talking. Been, yeah, I have not been able to replace <laughs> Because that. Twitter is like stronger with words right. too. Yeah. And text. Okay. And it has limitations on the amount. Yeah, it's about 240 characters. Okay. Right All my hashtags would not work. <laughs> I used way Always too many hashtags. hashtags. Yeah. Yeah. So we can talk a little bit about that. The algorithm algorithms. I know you mentioned Facebook. I feel like uh, every week I'm seeing different people or people I would see all the time before are no longer there. Um, uh, you know, how do you continue to maintain? reaching the same people you're trying to with the way all social media seems to change. Right. So reaching the same people is really just about going into the post and putting your target client criteria, income, job title, location, etc., their interests. That's the most basic thing you're able to do. Otherwise, what I do is I always make sure I engage or like and comment on my target client's okay. posts so I see them because social media knows what we like and they want to put that in front of us. The second way, and this is just a way to just build lists on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, there's a way for you to build a list on each one of those platforms. Okay. That way you go in and instead of scrolling around the news feed, you go right to those lists and you have a priority of okay. five to ten potential clients, past okay. clients, and you just go right to their pages. So that's kind of like the friends, close friends. I know that yeah, there's a so, lot of those you can do too. Right. right. If okay. you're a business page and you're on Facebook, it's page lists okay. that you go to and you interact with the pages. Okay. Yeah, we talked a little bit about that because I, I generally just use my regular friend, my regular person, not a personal. Facebook. I have yeah. a personal and not a page because I feel like it's easier for me to get followers as a person, not as a page. What are your thoughts on that? I always go for the business page first because number one, put yourself in a business position. You're a realtor, 
and a client's looking for you, they're going to see your Facebook business page on Google or they want to look at you as a business person. A lot of people on Facebook have blocked personal pages and that's a no-no. Um, or their personal page profile picture is casual and they want to see somebody who puts out a credible type of look like we were talking about earlier so automatically the mindset is going to the business page I'm doing business with this person so that's where I need to be so basically I need to just start using my page you guys are all gonna get likes today to follow me uh, (laughs) invites anyway to follow yeah and keep up with people too like I recommend if if you send somebody a like at first and it's been six months and they haven't liked your page just send them a quick message and entice them to like them somehow I see Shane has uh, joined us, Shane Bond from Bond Street Mortgage. Hey, Shane. Um, All right, so what else can we talk about? Um, I always like to talk a little bit about what you do for fun, but I think we still have plenty of business stuff to cover. Definitely. Um, So what are, you know, when you're doing this questionnaire... Um, and I don't want to give away all our secrets because I want you guys to contact her to help you grow your business. No secret. You can't duplicate this. Yes. So what are some of the the questions you're asking when you're giving them this questionnaire to fill out? Right. So first, when I'm on a consultation with a client, I always make sure to look at their current social media platforms just to give us a good talking points of conversation. I first make sure the client has looked at my website. Like, whatever questions they have for me, I answer them. And then we go through certain points like who your target client is, what do you want out of social media, what is your past history, and if you've had social media, why hasn't it brought you what it, it's typically brought you? A lot of people will use social media and post, and they won't engage back, and that's where a lot of the confusion comes from. If people, will, they'll use social media for one week, and they'll say, oh, goodbye, yeah. because I'm not getting instant results. Right, right. And social media is a relationship-building mm-hmm. type of platform where it takes time to build a relationship. Um, one of the things that I've, questions that I get from potential clients is, my client's not on social media. Okay. This is my client. I know their demographics, and they say they're not there. And I'm, I say, no, they are on social media. You just need to find them. And that's where I come into play because I have an organization set up to okay. find a potential client. Okay. It's very involved and in-depth, but it gets right to the point of finding the right client that you only will get when you're working with me. And a lot of the tactic that I use is direct messaging. Stories, Instagram and Facebook stories are great because it's so interesting. Like when Instagram stories first came out, I found that different people were watching my stories than were actually liking and commenting on my posts. So So you get a different audience on the stories. So it's just more data to grow. So from, influ- from social media influencers, who are some of your favorites? I mean, some of my favorites would be Gary V. I I know lots of you guys love Gary V. He's right. kind of that hardcore, down-to-earth, I mean, no filter, which I know we just talked about having filters, but I really just, <laughs> Gary V is one of my um, favorite influencers. So from an influencer on social media, who's one of your favorites? I have to say Gary V. Really? Okay. He's a, <laughs> I love him. He's going to be in Philly in a couple of weeks. I know. Yeah. Yes. And Ashley didn't even know I like Gary V. Oh, I don't see? think so. So yeah, yeah he's the first person on my mind yeah. because I'll constantly like talks to realtors directly. That's one of my main clients and a couple of other industries. And I just go in, listen to what he has to say and apply some of those yeah. tools to my business. Because it's also great to like have other people out there mm-hmm. as a gratification. Like, okay, this person's doing right. it too, right. and this is the results they're getting. So let me apply these right. tools. Oh, I want to share something really good. great. So this is a good tool for anyone, any type of business out there. Okay, ready? So you're at an open house, an event, whatever. Small class, small class, or a open house with about 20 people. Okay. You get in. Whoever's in charge or the host, tell everyone to get out their Facebook, get out their phone, go to Facebook, and go to that person's Facebook page. So if you were hosting an event or a class, you say, go to my Facebook business page and like and comment on this post. Okay, so having 20 people like and comment on one post will make it go out to their network. Oh, good. Yep. Yeah. More because one of the things that's important on social media is likes and comments right. in order to 
have more people see right. your post. Yeah. So it's next time, yeah, next yeah. time you're at an event, make sure to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Gary, we'll go back to Gary V briefly. He'll say, you know, there's no such thing as too much content. Right. right. And he's and he's very big on authenticity. Right. Um, we were talking earlier how one of my live videos, one of my first live videos last year, someone made a comment that I said um too much, uh, um, <laughs> which I say that's that's a hundred percent authentic because it's not scripted. Exactly. We haven't sat down. You know, this is the first time we're meeting in person. We probably have had five or six email exchanges over the last few months. Um, we did not sit here and go through a list of what we're going to say and how we're going to say we're not following the script. I would move the camera down if I was worried about the lighting but um you know he's talks about just being authentic and being real to a point i know i in my industry in my position in my company i can't go around throwing the f-bomb everywhere just wouldn't work right um but it does work for some people uh so he always talks about there's no such thing as too much content uh and getting it out there and sharing it and i've noticed lately he's been sharing his old content from him doing this you know, 10 years ago when he had a full head of hair and it was all dark. And I was like, this is what social media does. One library TV. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So. And um, what you were just saying about there's no such thing as too much content. One of the holdbacks that somebody has is, oh, why are you posting seven times a week? I don't need to post that much. And they get really nervous. Um, And it's important for me to say, hey, this is the reason why. A lot of times they may not understand. You know, my clients are not social media experts. I I am. That's your job. And that's why, I'm like, that's why you come to me. So really just making them comfortable with the process and trusting that posting seven times or even 14 times a week on Instagram yeah. is important because then they understand and say, oh, okay, this is why. Right. Because you can't be a secret agent or a secret right. business owner. If you want to grow. Yeah, yeah, especially in a growing digital world. Right. Yeah, and I find that Instagram, again, back to the algorithms, they've changed. They change like every six months. It drives me crazy yeah. because <laughs> I can post something yesterday and no one sees it, but then the post from 10 days ago, people are liking because it's changed how the feed is. But um, out of the five, we talked about five platforms, which one is your favorite? Uh, <laughs> Instagram is my favorite because of the pictures, uh, the fact that I'm able to share short videos and stories. LinkedIn is another one of my favorite because I found to really connect with someone on a business to business level. Yeah, I my, do LinkedIn a lot. Yeah, my LinkedIn business is business to business. My mm-hmm. my client's business are B, B to C. Right. Okay. So it's, it's the same for us as well in the tech industry. So I'm business to business, <laughs> but my clients so, are, are B to C, business to consumer for those of you who don't know. Yeah, it's really just adapting to the psychology of each one of those platforms. Mm-hmm. LinkedIn is getting more like Instagram. They're ad- right. adapting more of those I've seen features. the videos. They have the video features. LinkedIn is... LinkedIn's the be- one of the best in my opinion, but it's the slowest, mm-hmm. and whoever's in charge of LinkedIn needs to step up their game right. because Facebook and Instagram yes. have more of the live features. If LinkedIn had a live feature... Uh, it would change the game. Oh, that would be incredible. Yeah, especially because it's business. Right. Um, and I've seen a lot of people on LinkedIn, because I'm very active on LinkedIn, make comments like, oh, is this turning into Facebook? Because then all of a sudden you see um, some business people posting right. things that you would typically see on Facebook or it's turning into a dating site because you'll 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 get these inboxes you know hey pretty and I'm like oh my goodness but um I love LinkedIn especially from a business standpoint and then I guess my secondary would probably be Facebook because I feel like on Instagram you're limited with what you can post uh, like articles and things like that maybe I'm just not using it correctly but I feel like I you know it's easier to post an article or something business related on Facebook or LinkedIn and not so much on Instagram Right, well, you no article on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Did you it like follow the shorter. link? And I'm like, oh, it's just Yeah, too it has much, to so. be a shorter paragraph in about 180 characters. For Instagram, it's it's more about the picture, but it's also backing it up with a great caption. Okay. And LinkedIn's good for the longer form right. articles because you find that people actually sit down and, and read it. Right, right. Um, all right, so I think we covered a lot. We uh, did. And there's so much more we could cover. Let's see. Thanks for joining Tommy. in, everyone. It says, I uh, <laughs> thought this was a live auction page now. Um, let's see, we got Justin that just joined us. Um, so I was hoping to get some questions from the audience. There may have been some that came in. Um, what else can we cover today? Let's talk about some of your favorite spots in Philly. Perfect. Um, I, I love anything outside of Center City, specifically Front Street Cafe, where we are today. is, is one of my favorite spots. They have awesome gluten-free food. If it wasn't raining and terrible outside, we'd be outside there 
their courtyard is amazing. Um, the sun's peeking out right it now. It is. So <laughs> Which it's is a good. sign. I'm definitely not this pale. Uh, so what are some of your favorite restaurants in, um, in like the Philly area? Old City, okay. High Street on Market, and Farmigia. Okay. They, what type of food? Healthy food, okay. very good, sandwiches, salads type of place. You're able to go there, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The portions are nice and small. I That's the way I like them. So, Hermikia and High Street on Market in Old City. All right, awesome. So, um, where did you grow up? Did you grow up in this area? I grew up in Delaware County. Okay. All right, so you're pretty <laughs> close by. But I'm constantly around, you know, Philadelphia, the city, and different parts of the area as well. And in case you guys in here, uh, Francesca's a national, so she can do this pretty much anywhere. Um, as those of you who follow me know, the paradigm is we're in 11 states, but we're going national. Um, so she fits really well within our industry. Um, you know, she doesn't just handle the real estate industry, but um, she fits really well within us. And I think for all of you who follow me and who who watch from the real estate um, platform, um, give her a call, get a hold of her, talk to her about um, how you can up your game on social media. Uh, and I will post her information on the comments. But um, get in touch with her because I tell you, it's a it's a game changer when you have someone helping you. Besides, you know, we all know we're besides busy. Yourself. And, <laughs> and also having a, an eye from someone who does this for a living professionally, right. uh, it definitely changes the game. Because I know I'm pretty active, but I certainly, you know, could use some tips. And um, you know, if you're managing a business page as well as your personal page, um, again, she had mentioned that it would be. Uh, more beneficial for you to use yeah. your your business page business business yeah create a business page <laughs> if you don't have one um, I've always been against that because I feel like it was harder for me to get followers but now I know that I've changed your mind she changed my <laughs> mind today so she's done her job um, also if you go to my social media pages my Facebook LinkedIn Instagram Twitter you'll see how active I am mm -hmm. which is like incredibly backing to what I do because you want someone who's handling your social media to be equally as active and and that's yeah. what that's what you'll get so a good place to go on my website as well is the work section so just click on the work tab and you'll see some some client examples in there and you'll you're able to see the real the flow of the work the look as well as the results so besides social media what can you help them with can you connect them with web designers can you connect them with um, some branding folks like if they're if they're using an old uh, logo um, do you suggest that they kind of revamp those when you're going through the process with them are you strictly sticking to the social media aspect or are you looking at their overall brand or their company oh yes yeah. so I also I actually help clients with branding and website um, design as well so for example you are saying to me, Francesca, I need a new website. I will help you with that. I design on the Squarespace platform. I absolutely love it. Okay. And that it's a process. I always time out the process and give um, a deadline for different types of projects and things like that. And I help them with brand too. So if they're a realtor or another business person and they want their own brand, okay. I'm able to help them with that, go through the, the logo process and just ask the appropriate types of questions what do you want your client to see? Because some of my clients' brands are more on the higher end and some are more fun. So colors evoke feeling and that's how people take action. Oh, it's so fun, it's, yeah. it's psychology of marketing Great. through branding, websites, and social media. So when someone comes to me, they get a real full uh, body marketing okay. experience. That's awesome. No print marketing. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> I will say that. It's all yeah. digital. <laughs> yeah, and I change it up a lot, you know, because I'll post, you know, an article, a quote, a photo. Um, I think when you mix it up, you're attracting different people. Definitely. And you're keeping them on their toes. Yeah. Um, the live videos I love to do, uh, although I don't do them as often as I was. But um, Yeah, differentiate your, your um, content. Mm -hmm. Do not just post your properties or one type of subject. Have five different subjects in there. Yeah, that's a good that's a, a good um, tip there because I do see a lot of the the agents that will just you know only on Saturdays and Sundays it will be their open houses and um, right and then you know you kind of they just get lost in the other hundreds of open house flyers that are posted. All right, so I think we covered a lot today, guys. Thanks I really for joining. appreciate you joining us. Um, thank, you thank you for, for having me. Yeah, there this we go. is fun. Yeah, so. And this was really natural. Yes. Like, even Ashley mentioned this is the first time mm -hmm. her and I met together, but this was a great conversation, and I want you to let us know. Did you yep. enjoy it? Any key takeaways? Yep, and post your comments, and I'm going to post Francesca's contact information for uh, my agents and loan officers out there, um, and anyone else, even in the hospitality industry. I have, I have some restaurant friends um, that I've connected with. Um, 
give her a shout and thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Hopefully the rest of the week it's a little bit better in the Northeast here. <laughs> um, it's cold and rainy today again and I'm hoping for the, uh, the spring to, to kick in at some point. Um, as always, guys, thank you for joining Ashley Gravano with Paradigm Title Crew. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.